A friend of mine introduced us. All I knew was that he was in real estate. David was nice, very charming, easy to get along with. We've always had a good time. He had a lot of ambition, a lot of good ideas. David is the kind of person that makes people feel good. He could sell you just about anything. He could sell a screen door to a submarine. It's just how he was. Tracy was the new girlfriend. She really wanted to take over, so she was going to be in charge. That was her mode of operation. Donna, she was his ex-wife. It was weird. I liked him and his personality. If he had a son, that didn't even matter to me. Tracy was nice. Just about everything was good at the beginning. Well, I started finding out stuff. He gambled like crazy. David owed everybody money. Very paranoid. Taped everything. Prostitutes, call girls. David left with cash. He had $25,000 with him. This was a pretty brutal crime. Just cold, calculated murder. He was shot and burned in the parking lot. He had been wrapped in what appeared to be an electric blanket. And then outside of that was uh, what appeared to be a blue plastic tarp. If you're going to kill somebody, you would do it for a reason. David and Donna didn't get along. She had a half a million reasons. Donna has gained everything. She wanted the house. What happened to David? What happened to him? I don't know. Why are you asking that? Tracy was the only one who had anything against him, really. Somebody's lying. If I wasn't walking in my shoes, I wouldn't believe somebody telling me the story. Secrets and Lies on Grapevine Lake. It was the middle of the night when forensic death investigator John Briggs got the call to report to the scene of a homicide. As soon as you get out of the vehicle, you can smell a burning odor. The body was wrapped in several items that had burned during the fire, but were not totally consumed. There was the remains of a blue plastic camping tarp then around all that was rope. The body was still smoldering as Briggs carefully rolled it over, hoping to identify the victim. I could not even tell if it was a male or a female, but based upon the face, I knew it was a Caucasian person. When police first arrived at this crime scene in Grand Prairie, Texas in April of 2002, the intense heat from the fire had damaged the body to such a degree that crime scene investigators had to spend hours delicately recovering the remains. The police found tire tracks and some fiber materials, but little else by way of evidence. The medical examiner determined the victim was a man in his 40s killed by a single gunshot wound to the heart, but his identity was a mystery. Dental records would later confirm the victim as 40-year-old David Nixon, a successful realtor from nearby Grapevine, Texas. I knew the second he never called me back, because he would never not call me back. I knew something had happened. 14-year-old Nicholas is David Nixon's son. What's your favorite Fresh picture? Fun. Where was this? Cabo. I was deep sea fishing. <laughs> this is in Steamboat. We were snowmobiling. You had a great smile, your dad. He idolized his father, a bear of a man, at 6'4", 240 pounds. 
trustworthy, dependable, protective. Anybody who knew him knew that he would do just about anything for anybody. Everyone that knew him well just talked about how much he loved you. He was always bragging about something I did. Come on. Nicholas's mother, Donna Lella, is David Nixon's first wife. They married in 1990. Years later, she still has fond memories. Charming, vivacious, and full of life. And you never know what you're going to get. Love surprises. Love surprises. Love surprises. Nicholas, their only child, was born the following year. Anything for Nicholas. Crazy about him. David soon found success selling real estate, becoming a top agent, eventually brokering million dollar deals on high end properties in the affluent suburbs north of Dallas. He hardly ever slept. It was bigger and better, faster. It was always a race, it was always about competition. Their marriage ended badly in 1995 after David had an affair with flight attendant Lisa Hill. They married and divorced within two years. But David wasn't single for long. Before his divorce was final, he met another woman, an attractive 27-year-old accountant named Tracy Frame. He was nice, very charming easy to get along with, very smooth. I wasn't interested in dating right then, but he was pretty persistent. And convincing. So. David and Tracy soon started living together in this house in Grapevine. They lived extravagantly, often taking ocean cruises together. The trips were amazing. Did he have a taste for the finer things in life? Absolutely. He always wanted to have the best of the best. Drive a Lexus, drive a Mercedes. Did he live beyond his means? Yes. At home, David and Tracy were fixtures in the social scene at Grapevine Lake. I knew everybody out there, and he, you know, it was, it was great. That lake is a Peyton place, I'm telling you right now. It was amazing to see who woke up with who in the mornings. Jerry Val knows that scene very well. Everybody knew everybody, and uh, there were a lot of really good times, a lot of fun times. And Tracy and I just became friends. Tracy was especially popular among men. Good looking. One of the most attractive women out there, I would say. Some people didn't like her, maybe because she was that good looking. But Tracy only had eyes for David. At the beginning, when I first met them, they loved each other, they were spending time together, they enjoyed doing things together. But their relationship was volatile. And most of the time, they were a lot of fun to be around, but boy, when they argued, you just wanted to get away from it. The loudest and longest arguments were over finances and David's gambling debts. So the money was going out faster than it was coming in? Absolutely. I hoped that things would get better, and it just didn't. In fact, the arguing got worse. It was cats and dogs. Every time we saw each other, there were a lot more angry words than there were happy. Sometimes it got rough. Did he batter you? No, not on a regular basis, absolutely not. Not on a regular basis. Did he ever batter you? We got in some shoving matches, but I wouldn't say that's battering. In the spring of 2002, after almost four years together, it was over. And so you said, we're done. Yeah. I told him that this isn't what I wanted. And, you know, we should probably think about going our own ways. But going their separate ways would be complicated. David reportedly owed more than $100,000 in back taxes to the IRS. To protect his property, he had the house put in Tracy's name. You wanted full ownership of the house. Well, I had full ownership of the house. Can I get an officer to come to uh, my house? David disagreed. Arguments over ownership of the house escalated on April 9th when he called the police. Okay, and your name, sir? 
David Nixon. He was livid that Tracy had changed the locks to the house. She has now locked me out of my own house. I'm, I'm sitting out here in the driveway with nobody here and I'm locked out. Okay. My house and it's my stuff and I want to know my rights. Yeah, we'll get someone out there and they can explain that all to you, okay? The police helped settle that argument. So after that domestic disturbance call on April the 9th, things were civil between the two of you? I wouldn't say civil, it was business. I wasn't gonna leave him high and dry. Almost two weeks later, David Nixon was dead. I was crying and they just said he had been murdered. He was shot and burned. Didn't even cross my mind that he had been hurt or injured in any way. Tracy says she was stunned by the news. You must have been thinking, like, who could have done this? Sure. I mean, it was there was a lot of things going through my mind. I just, I just couldn't believe it. Donna Lella, David's first wife, could believe it. When I went to the police department, those were my first words that Sunday night I went there. Tracy Frame did it. David told me I had to tell you this. It was eerie. He was preparing for the worst. To hear Donna Lella tell the story, David Nixon, her ex-husband, had a premonition that he would be murdered. He told me what was going to happen. And what's more, he knew the person who would kill him. He was going to be murdered by Tracy. He used the word murder that Tracy was going to kill him. He didn't call the police with his suspicions or his fears? No, and I didn't think to tell him that. Donna went to the police and reported David missing after he didn't return phone messages from their son, Nicholas. Donna then confronted Tracy Frame over the phone. What did you ask her? I asked her what she did with David. And what did she say? And she said, well, he's on vacation. What makes you think I did something to David? I said, David's missing, Tracy. What'd you do? I kept asking for that. Tracy wasn't worried about David's disappearance. What were you thinking? Nothing. I mean, that's normal. At that point, it was not uncommon for him to, to do what he wanted, to go out with the guys or go stay in a hotel. I didn't call him, beg him to come home or whatever. Absolutely not. She says David sometimes snuck off to Las Vegas for a weekend of gambling. What else happened in Vegas? I don't really know how to say this. Apparently there were prostitutes, call girls, other activities that happened. Despite their differences, Tracy and David were still living together at the house in Grapevine. But David had found another place to live and was making arrangements to move just days before his murder. You were discussing plans for him to move his things out of the house. Mm -hmm. And what did he ask you to do? To rent a van. I mean, we've rented them before. Tracy did rent a Penske moving van and furniture dolly, but David never returned. Since David and Tracy lived together, she was she was our key witness. She was the one we wanted to talk to the most. Grapevine police detective Larry Hallmark was assigned to investigate the murder of David Nixon. Once we met her, her demeanor was completely not what I expected or, or not what would be normal under those circumstances. They just said he had been murdered, gunshot wound, and they had to use the dental records. The first thing she asked was, how did they identify him? which I thought was a, an extremely suspicious response. The detective is quoted as saying that you asked oh, immediately, how did they identify the body? And that's not true. That's not true. No. Frame told detectives that she was home alone the night David disappeared. She agreed to be questioned on videotape at the police station. Did I love you? Did you love you? Well, Tracy tells them that she and David were having problems in the months leading to his murder. I think we just 
aren't getting along and I just lost a baby. Tracy learned she was pregnant the previous fall, just as her relationship with David was crumbling. David, you know, he was totally against it. Um, wasn't interested in it at all. Tracy now says health complications forced her to terminate the pregnancy. But at the time, she blamed David, writing to him, I have given you everything, heart and soul, including murder of her unborn baby. I hope you are happy because I am not. The loss of her unborn baby and David's reaction left Tracy bitter. But he was unapologetic. He could be cruel. He could be very vicious with his tongue. But was she angry enough to commit murder? Hallmark and another detective, Matt Gudgel, start pressing Tracy for answers. Things have just turned real serious. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. So it's time to be honest. What happened today? What happened to him? Mm -hmm. I don't know why you asked me that. And I asked me what happened today. She could never tell the truth during that entire interview. She was evasive, and sometimes she just out and out lied. Did you shoot David Nixon? No, I didn't. Did you wrap him in an electric blanket and set him afire? No. Do you know the circumstances surrounding David Nixon's murder? No. While Hallmark had his suspicions about Tracy Frame, he had little to go on. As far as physical evidence, you don't have much to work with, do you? No, no. No gun? No gun. No bullets? No. No blood? No blood. And an exhaustive search of the crime scene, the storm drain, yielded few clues. The area had already been washed down by firefighters. You actually went down in the storm drain? It's an eight foot tall storm drain that's 15 feet below where we are standing right now. And I actually walked that 94 feet looking for any physical evidence. What I found was that this storm drain was clean. I didn't even find gravel or broken glass in here. The police did find a set of tire tracks at the scene, providing Hallmark with an important clue. The tire tracks that backed up to this body were the same make, model, and size as the tires that were on the Penske truck that Tracy had rented. And Hallmark soon caught another break. Security cameras at a Tom Thumb supermarket near David and Tracy's house captured fleeting images over that weekend. Blurry at best, but recorded at very precise times. The videotape shows a Penske moving van that looks similar to the one Tracy rented driving through the parking lot. Also on tape, someone abandons David's white Lexus in the lot three days after his murder. The cameras show a woman walking outside the store. Inside, she's seen buying several items and then leaving. Now she's gonna come out of the store right there. Is that woman Tracy Frame? You're sure that's her? It's a woman that looks like her. But it wasn't you? No. Doesn't even look like me. Were you at the store with the truck no. that night? You weren't there? No. I was at my parents' house in Arlington Saturday and Sunday. But if it is Tracy caught on tape, she's caught without an explanation. What's your theory? What happened that night? Tracy had finally made the decision that um, she was just going to have to kill David. And she shot him while he was sleeping. Then she rented a moving truck and waited until the cover of night to move his body. How does a woman weighing 145 pounds dispose of a body weighing 245 pounds? You use a furniture dolly. It would just be a matter of rolling him onto that dolly and strapping him down. Hallmark says Tracy tried but failed to shove Nixon's body down into the storm drain. You believe that she dumped the body here and then two days later returned to set it afire to get rid of the evidence completely. Right. And then she could just sweep him into that storm drain and he would just disappear forever. 
That alleged plan fell apart after a passerby spotted the fire. But the question remained, why would Tracy want David dead? Money, greed, that's the only thing that I had to go on. There was nothing to gain, nothing. Tracy is about to counterattack, and the new man in her life is leading the way. You believe that she knows nothing about the circumstances surrounding David Nixon's murder? I don't think she has a clue. I'm innocent. I've never been in trouble with the police. I've never thought the police were anything but out there to help you. And then the last time you talked to me was Thursday. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I'm confused. Why is that a lie? Why? That is not true. You need to listen to what I'm about to tell you. You really do. I'm going to promise you I'm not mad at you. But things have just turned real serious for you. Why? The day after Tracy Frame met with police detectives, she was arrested and charged with the murder of David Nixon. What are you thinking about right now? It's just been a horrible experience. I, I knew that it would happen. It was no surprise. I knew in my heart that she had done it. But would it stick, was the question. Tracy was released on bond and fitted with an electronic monitoring device to be worn until her trial. To go to a restaurant or to go shopping in shorts when it's 105 degrees, it's, it's hard. Everybody stares, it leaves bruises on, on my ankle and stuff. But Tracy has her defenders. Okay, a lot of cold, a lot of vibration, none of the P word. And none is more loyal than dentist Roland Taylor, a native of Great Britain who settled in Texas. Everybody goes, what a bitch she is. And she's totally the opposite. And in her hour of need, he is standing behind her. Who would want David Nixon dead? Probably the people that he owed money to. Uh, and he owed a lot. And Tracy Frame did not have a motive. You know what? It would behoove her to keep him alive because he owed her a ton of money. Roland and Tracy were longtime friends from Grapevine Lake. I've never met anybody like her. She's very smart. She's fun. After her arrest, a romance developed. All Tracy's ever wanted to do is love and be loved. That's all she's ever wanted. And when they say, Roland, you better watch your back, that's why I put a ring on her finger. Roland and Tracy are engaged to be married. I will never, ever ever stop loving her. I'll never leave. I'm there. Donald Fear is Tracy's defense attorney. As the state said, this is purely a circumstantial case. Fear has worked on only three murder cases in his career, but he's confident he can quickly win an acquittal for Frame. She was arrested in the first 36 hours in a homicide case, and that's just unheard of unless it happens to be standing there with the smoking gun screaming, I did it, I killed him. Fear says an ambitious Detective Hallmark got it all wrong from the beginning. You have a detective corporal who wants to be a detective sergeant. A high-profile homicide case comes across his desk. Make a quick arrest, make a quick case, you look good, you make sergeant. Fear says the case against his client doesn't add up, pointing out that no incriminating evidence was found at the house or in the moving truck. Where did she kill him? They tore the house apart, and if she killed him in there, she had white carpet. Miami CSI needs to hire her to show how she can defeat all possible scientific trace evidence, dragging a body across a house through vehicles and then out on the ground. He says the videotaped interview with detectives was designed to trap his client. Did you find her evasive during that questioning? No, I found her confused. He would have called me Sunday or Monday. You saw interrogation question aimed at trying to make her look bad and trip her up. And your car was still there. Sunday at 9 p.m. It's not true. I mean, it wasn't there. See, now we're getting back into everybody's line to trace no, it. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. And she looked bad. 
and she looked bad. And that's how it's supposed to work. Break them down. Who knows? Maybe they'll pull a Perry Mason. I did it. I killed him. God help me. And they didn't get that, so you just keep beating on her. And it worked. Worked real well. Donald Fear and Tracy Frame also dismissed the videotape evidence, allegedly showing Tracy abandoning the white Lexus, parking the Penske truck, and shopping at the convenience store. Who is that shadowy figure? I don't know. If I did, they would be sitting here and I wouldn't be. Tracy says no one can tell who that is, but more than just a blurry figure is being recorded in this transaction. Store records show that whoever this person is, she uses Tracy's store discount card at the checkout, saving 19 cents. Someone using your discount card the weekend David went missing. That's correct. That's what they but it said. wasn't you? No. Doesn't even look like me. Tracy admits the discount card is difficult to explain. So I don't, I don't have an answer for it, but I don't think that I would use a, a discount card if I was trying to, to sneak around town. One would think. It's pretty odd, though. That's, I, I agree. Frame and her attorney throw out several theories about who may have killed David Nixon. First, they suggest Nixon could have been murdered during a robbery. Was it common for David to walk around with big wads of cash in his pocket? Oh, yes. When he had it, he liked to show everybody. He liked to be flashy. Or that it was payback over gambling debts. Well, I mean, I knew he gambled. I just didn't know to the depth of it, I, I guess I could say. And they point an accusing finger at someone who knew both David Nixon and Tracy Frame very well. Hey, Paul, this is Jerry Val at Best Auto Sales in Fort Worth. Jerry Val, friend at the lake. Um, Used to be a friend. He's into businesses of helping people, you know, if they need to borrow money or whatever. And In the business of helping people who want to borrow money. Okay, hold on. Can I answer that? Fear stops well, Tracy I mean, from finishing her probably. sentence. I think where y'all come from, they call them Shylocks. <laughs> I'm an easy target. I, I sell used cars. I, you know, I, mean, I take a thousand for it. At one time, David loaned me some money. And right after Christmas, I paid him back. Jerry and David had a plan to meet the night he disappeared. Tracy and her lawyer insist the meeting was to discuss David's interest in a new boat. And he had $25,000 cash on him that he took from the bank to buy the boat. No, David didn't carry large sums of the money. He didn't owe anybody money. We were going to get together for a drink. Well, we ran out of time. It was just getting too late for us to go out and meet. And so I spoke to him on the telephone. And uh, that was the last time I spoke to David. And Donald Fear raises questions about yet another possible suspect. Did Tracy Frame stand to gain anything financially with David Nixon's death? Not a thing. But the first ex-wife did. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting stating the fact. Two months before he died, David Nixon took out a life insurance policy for half a million dollars. And Nicholas was named the primary beneficiary. Yes. She's secondary beneficiary, but in all reality, as her son is the primary beneficiary, she got the money. Tracy Frame got nothing. So who stood to gain the most? Well, that's obvious. I mean, Donna has gained everything. Did you receive anything from David Nixon's estate? Very little. Very little. Less than $10,000. I don't find losing David a gain at all. And in fact, I find it the hardest part of my life for Nicholas. So when you found out that Tracy was arrested, what was going through your mind? Did you believe it was possible? It had to be her. Everybody else I knew that knew him liked them. I mean, she was the only one who had anything against them, really. As the trial begins, the defense is confident the prosecution has no real case, no proof. We cannot get a handle on even what their theory of the crime was. Insisting that the police never investigated other suspects. Tracy Frame is the only person on the planet that would absolutely not have killed David, that would have put money into getting him a bodyguard if he had been threatened because the only way she was ever going to get her money back out of the thousands she'd spent on him was to keep him alive and selling houses.
More than three years after David Nixon's murder. Hello. Good morning. Tracy Frame is finally about to stand trial. I feel fine. I feel like everything's going to turn out right. What do you make of the prosecution's case against you? It's pretty apparent that they don't, they don't have as much as they would lead you to believe they had. There's no doubt in your mind that, that Tracy Frame killed David Nixon? No. Tarrant County, Texas Assistant DA Sean Colston is prosecuting the case against Tracy Frame. I think if you look at Tracy Frame, she's just an unpredictable type person, and uh, she's the type of person who could kill without a motive. What kind of personality are, are you talking about? Well, Tracy Frame has a personality where it's all about Tracy. Tracy is going to get what Tracy wants, and she doesn't care how she gets it. Even if it means killing someone? If, if it means murder, Tracy's willing to do that. Tracy's fiance, Roland Taylor, says prosecutors are trying the wrong woman. Is that Tracy hmm? inside the Tom Thumb store? No. How you do know you know? How you, the thighs. They were touching. And I'll tell you what, that lady has got a set of legs that don't quit. There's no doubt in my mind that's not her. That's not her? No. Not at all. She says she was never at the Tom Thumb store. Do you believe that? Absolutely not. She says that someone else used her Tom Thumb card. Do you believe that? Absolutely not. I thought we'd hang out here in the lobby. <laughs> With little forensic evidence, no eyewitnesses, and a washdown crime scene, the defense believes the prosecution simply cannot make a case for murder. You know, we're going to show you the smoke and mirrors for two weeks, and you're just going to be overwhelmed by the, so much smoke. There must be a fire somewhere. So who's responsible for David Nixon's murder? Today? We'll, I don't think we'll ever find out because they never looked very far once they accused me. In the courtroom, Tracy's defense was to go in the offense, arguing that the prosecution failed to offer proof beyond a reasonable doubt, that there was no real evidence linking Tracy to the crime, that no blood was found at the house, nothing was found at the storm drain, that these tire tracks could have come from any number of other trucks, and that this woman is not Tracy Frame. And along with no apparent motive, there's no murder weapon, no gun. Or was there? Did your dad have a gun? Yeah. And where did he keep it? In a safe. You saw that? Yeah. You saw the gun? Yeah. He showed it to me just to, you know, make sure I was okay with it. David's safe was in the bedroom of the house he shared with Tracy. The police didn't find a gun in the, in the safe in his house. I know. Where is it? I don't know. Lake Grapevine, perhaps? Down a drain pipe? I don't know what she did with it. She? She. Tracy. Did David keep a, a gun in the house? No. He never did? No. He didn't keep a, a gun in the safe in the house? No. Police did not find a gun, but they did find two key witnesses to bolster their circumstantial case against Tracy. She just kept asking a lot of questions on how to get stains out. John Wright and Mike Heaton remember the day Tracy Frame came into their janitorial supply company shopping for cleaning products to remove odor and blood. We sold her probably about $100 worth of stuff. It was one day after David disappeared. I mean, she was... I don't even want to use the word desperate, but appeared desperate for, sure. it's got to work. So Tracy asked the salesman if there was a foolproof way to remove blood stains. And then we told her about the muriatic acids, which we don't sell. The next day, the shadowy figure who prosecutors say is Tracy Frame is at the Tom Thumb store buying just that, muriatic acid. Every item purchased by that woman was found in the home when we searched it. For the prosecution, all the pieces of the puzzle fit. I think once you put all of that information together, uh, I think uh, any reasonable person can say that that is Tracy Frame. And as for the defense suggestion that Donna may have had more to gain from David's death than Tracy, investigators say there was nothing to it. 
I'd heard some innuendo from Tracy and her attorneys that somehow there was this large insurance policy. Everything checked out. There was never anything suspicious about Donna's behavior. Almost nothing Tracy told us checked out. Every trail led to Tracy. But will the jury agree? On the eve of the verdict, Tracy Frame, who did not take the stand, seems subdued and uncertain. I don't believe in justice very much right now, and I don't know how I'll feel after it, but I have to believe that the right thing will be done. I think Tracy saw an opportunity, and she took it. It was all inference, coincidence, could be, maybe, looks good. Well, that isn't enough to convict somebody of murder. After a two-week-long trial, it is judgment day for Tracy Frame. Scared? Yes, of course. Very. If convicted of murder, she faces a possible sentence of life in prison. It's a reality, but I don't think that I'll, I'll have to worry about that. Defense lawyer Don Fear is anxious. Actually, we're confident that we're going to be successful and the jury will see that clearly my client is not guilty. As a lawyer, who knows? <laughs> the day, March 9th, 2005, would also have been David Nixon's 43rd birthday. Nicholas is feeling the stress. Members of David's family from New Hampshire have attended the trial. For three years now, we've been struggling with this and, and waiting for this day, and we're glad it's here. Today's David's birthday. Keep our fingers crossed. Whatever the outcome, for Donna and Nicholas, some questions may never be answered. What was it that Tracy Frame had on David Nixon? Why couldn't she let him go? How did it get so out of control that she wanted to kill him? I don't know those answers. Am I sure they have the right person? Yes. And the moment of judgment finally arrives. The jury has reached a verdict. I'll ask the audience. I uh, realize there are emotions in here, but we need for everyone to keep their composure. Judge Mike Thomas has not permitted cameras to cover the trial, but he does allow us inside for the verdict. If you'd stand, please. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the offense of murder as charged in the indictment. Signed by the four person. The jury takes less than four hours to find Tracy guilty. The sentence, 40 years. Yes, I'm very happy. Very happy with the jury's verdict. Hallelujah. About time. David's family is elated, but later that night, the mood becomes thoughtful. David will never, ever, ever be with us again. She's taken the rest of his life away from us, and I really don't think she deserves to have any freedom. I'm just glad it's finally over, you know. It's gone on long enough. Donna worries how Nicholas is coping without his father. The little things that his dad did. The big peacock chest sticking out going, that's my boy. That's what he's struggling with. That's what he misses. Donna wishes that somehow she had done more. Mad that I can't change anything. I can't bring it. I know in my mind, Tracy killed David. Jerry Vowell is sure the jury got it right. She probably just said, heck with you, bang. So the motive was money. I think it was money, and I think it was a sense of entitlement. Entitlement, says Detective Larry Hallmark, to her fair share of the house. David Nixon was killed for $80,000. I think he could have been killed for $80 if it had suited Tracy. Uh, Tracy Frame was the person that ultimately has paid the price for this crime, not the person who did it. Roland Taylor remains loyal to his fiance. Aren't you setting yourself up for many years of heartache? No, it's not heartache. Being engaged to a no. woman who's serving 40 years in the state penitentiary. No. It'd be heartache if she wasn't in my life. There's nothing here anymore except a memory.
Do you think you have strong grounds for an appeal? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> yes. Tracy Frame spoke to us just weeks after her conviction. How did the prosecutors manage to convince the jury that you were guilty of murder? I'm not sure. Um, they threw a lot of stuff at them. How have you been getting through these last couple of weeks? Just the best I can. What's your greatest fear right now? The unknown, I guess. Do you have any regrets right now? Yeah, in the justice system. Do you think you have the inner strength to get through this? I don't know, I'm pretty scared. What are you scared of the most, seriously? It's the rest of my life. I don't really get the whole thing, you know, but I don't know, it's weird. Do you think when you get older you'll be able to understand it any better? You can't understand that kind of person.